to have some thank yous to do for first. First up, so we've got Pat Gemini, our giant sponsor, and all of the CEO of City London. So we'll run for the first time. Sponsors, Apia, Code Enigma, Bright Lemon, Thomas Guys, Decent Online, and Holson. So we'll have a Also, um, ACG, Hayden, Kevin, and Gateway. So uh, our silver sponsors, we also had Cameron Wilding, and then we had um, we had Agile Collective. And Sage Show, that's right, for our silver sponsors. So thanks to those guys. I'm going to choose a really uh, special keynote for the last day of Drupal Camp in a second, and that's going to be really cool. But before we get there, we're going to say some thank yous to some volunteers. Uh, hey guys, uh, just like a few house notices, can everyone hear? Uh, first, this, this glasses case was found, so anyone wants to claim that, uh, that is there. The only thing is that there's a couple of events that are coming up. Uh, in, well, in around Britain, in Front End United on the 13th and 14th of April. Uh, in London, and uh, then Drupal Dev Days in June in Dublin, which are both great events. Uh, and then, just want to say thank you to a few people that kind of made this happen. All the volunteers have been amazing. Particular thanks to uh, George, uh, Michael, and Stefan for doing everything that they've done. Uh, amazing people at City University, Alex and Emma particularly, have been awesome. Uh, big thanks to Headley and Alex for uh, putting the website together because they just basically did that all themselves. Uh, also thanks to John and Ben and Faraz and Leon and all the other people that made it happen. Major, major thanks to anyone that's spoken and keynotes. And um, a big thank you to someone that's not here, a guy called Ed, who basically made this happen at the beginning and then went off to Thailand you can see it actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, this event wouldn't have happened without him. And we got a thank last night that uh, two people that were absolutely key to this event. Uh, one is Tim Neeson, who was absolutely fantastic. And the other is uh, uh, a girl called Della, who's over there, who is... <laughs> <laughs> so we're just trying to get Ray working on the project, so we'll see if that works. But I'm going to intro um, the speaker. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We work together. Um, and what he's going to be talking about today, uh, Rob Douglas, what he's going to be talking about um, is something very special to the open source community. Um, you know, and Drupal. Drupal has this fantastic thing called distributions, which I'm sure we all know about. Um, and people are doing really interesting things with distributions at the moment. Um, it's, um, you know, it's one way that uh, companies such as ours uh, can promote Drupal um, in a really effective way and enable Drupal for a whole range of new users. Uh, so I think it's a really important thing to our community, uh, distributions, and Robert's going to talk about it today. So here it is. And uh, you're just going to have to look at the green faces in my presentation because somehow, no matter which Macintosh computer we plug the projector into, it doesn't want to show any reds at all. So we'll suffer through it. And to know that I'm not that Focus and vision. 
This will enable Drupal to reach out to both new and different markets. If we had a Drupal for education distribution, it might be able to be head on with the other course management systems like Moodle or Blackboard. And not only will distributions allow Drupal to compete in existing markets, but they'll enable us to create new markets. The number of verticals is nearly unlimited, and the opportunities are numerous to buy it and conquer. It is important that Drupal distributions collaborate and not compete. To do so, we have to provide Drupal distributions an environment that encourages collaboration and allows us for specialization without introducing incompatibilities that drive competition. The good news is that we already know how to do this. We've been through it already with civic space a Drupal distribution for online campaign management and grassroots activism. They realized that the success of the distribution depended on the success of Drupal Core and vice versa. They decided that they shouldn't fork core development, collaboration, not competition. The bad news is that it can be hard work. People will find that creating a distribution is fun, is fun and easy, but that being a responsible maintainer might be a lot less fun. Who wants to track changes or documentation, maintain modules, provide upgrade paths, manage releases, and provide support for years to come? So here's a simple rule. Create distributions only because you want to provide users a service. If you don't want to collaborate, if you can't commit to providing service around your distribution, you're likely to do more harm than good. As a community, we should disapprove, disapprove, of Drupal distributions that do not intend to collaborate, that have no signs of long-term commitment, or that risk blocking people in. These compatibilities can create incentives for people to compete. Just look at what is happening with Debian and Ubuntu. Debian are succeeding to proceed. The same thing is happening with Mambo and Joomla. With NetSBD, BSC, FreeBSD, Unix Linux, and it might happen with Red Hat and Oracle. The difference between distribution and a fork can be subtle. Listening to our users and changing the way things work should continue to be the preferred answer to user frustration. As Darwin said, it's not the strongest of organisms that win, it's the most adaptable. The fact that Drupal 5.0 will support distribution is big. And most people have yet to see its full potential. I don't think that any other open source project has done something like this before, or at least not on this scale, that we might end up doing. Time will tell. It's going to be an exciting change, and I'm confident that we will be able to tap into the incredible potential. But as a community, we have to take responsibility and make sure that distributions collaborate rather than compete. We also have to make sure that we disapprove of distributions that are not properly maintained. Community responsibility will become very important as we move forward with this awesome adventure. I hope it all works out. So yeah, that was um, a blog post that we wrote in 2006. <laughs> It's interesting, he wrote another blog post uh, a lot later that said almost exactly the same thing. We'll get to that. So who am I, Robert Douglas? Why am I talking about distributions? I care a lot about distributions. Was anybody in Belgium when I talked about App Source? Anybody? A couple people. I've been thinking for years about the role that uh, a distribution or a feature or an application has in our ecosystem and how we can benefit from that. To that effect, uh, well, like so <laughs> my day job is to work with the commerce guys uh, as the director of products, and we actually own and produce a Drupal distribution. Oh, poor Celine. <sighs> She's really green. <laughs> <laughs> we produce the Drupal commerce, commerce takes our distribution, which is an out of the box uh, store ready to ship physical goods and do e commerce online. So I think about this day in and day out. And I wanted to talk to you all about some of my thoughts and observations about where we are with Drupal distributions. So in, in, in the description of the session, I asked, are we doing distributions right? And will we ever help us reach the promised land, whatever, whatever that is? But before we get to you know, the answers to the rhetorical questions, let's actually back up a little bit and investigate 
what is a Drupal distribution? Because as we said, the number of verticals is nearly unlimited and the opportunities are numerous. So Drupal's our first class citizens on Drupal or distributions are first class citizens on Drupal Power. So they live at the same level as modules and core and themes. Um, they're therefore very important in our information architecture on the website. And the steps to make a distribution are roughly um, for you developers you're going to do a coaster today in case you want to go make one. Um, you make something called the brush make file, which is a list of modules and libraries and patches that you want in your distribution. And when you put that into the network, magic happens. It takes that list of all the things that you specify and it grabs them from all of the internet. It can be on GitHub, it can be on Drupal.org. There's a, a white list of sources where you can get other libraries that you want in your distribution. So the first step is a collection step of all of the software and the modules and the themes and everything, the modifications even of Drupal that you want to be in your distribution. And then it packages that all together and makes it one downloadable product. And when you install that downloadable product, then more magic happens because it gives you a chance as a developer to uh, inject your configuration and do all of the steps of site building that you would normally do with Drupal when you're getting started to get the person installing it to a certain point. So here's an example of the install process. This is from a distribution called Commons, which Commons 3.0, which is something produced, maintained by Aqua. This was released uh, last week, I believe. And one of the things in the installation process, one of the ways that you can configure the distribution in this one is to um, choose the color palette. And they have the choice between green and purple. And more than purple. I've got to talk to those web designers about this is the color line. And the result is really nice looking. Um, <laughs> You get something that's much more fun website out of the box than if you just go and grab Drupal. How many of you remember the day when you first just installed Drupal Core for the first time, looked at it blindly, blankly, questioningly, <laughs> Drupal, what art thou? <laughs> right? it's, it's like, it doesn't really give you a lot to go on when you first install it. So the idea of distribution is that it, it takes those first steps for you. How many steps? takes is a question. And you know, a lot of people actually make distributions. I mean, a lot of companies are investing a lot of time and money making a lot of distributions. So I just showed you comments from Acquia, but phase two has four of them. I put three of them off there, but they really focus on open public, open publish, and to a, to a lesser extent, open atrium. Commerce guys, I mentioned we make one called Commerce Kickstarter. That's been a team of four or five developers for most of the year. It's a big, big, big effort. It's not a trivial expense to make something like Commerce Kickstarter. There's a German company called Bright Solutions. Who's ever heard of Erpal? It's a full ERP system built in Drupal. And they are building and maintaining that. They're just releasing the first, the first versions. Um, the company formerly known as, known as Node 1, Wunderkrog uh, has a distribution called NodeStream. Anybody use it? Yeah. Who knows the company Funny Monkey? <laughs> They're a part of the company that focuses on education. They have a Drupal distribution called um, Julio or Julio. I'm not quite sure how they say it. Julio. Julio? Yeah, from me and Julio down in the schoolyard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't shout another company in the US that are building a CRM called Red Hen. Who's, who's tried that? Open Church. There we go. Open public, open government. Of course, you've got Open Church. It's actually one of the most popular distributions that are it's been around a long time, too. Level 10 makes one called Open Enterprise. Pantheon makes one called Penaboli. That's the collection of black boxes. Uh, you've seen on there, there's panels and configurable blocks. 
Chapter 3 uh, has one that actually, I believe, moving away from a bit called Open Academy. Probably because there are at least five other education uh, university focused distributions that I know of, including Elms and uh, Open Scholar, which is another one. So, this is a very extensive business. None of those were trivial efforts. They all have full marketing sites, they all have years of developer. Into it. It's especially extensive business when I mean, you consider that out of 887,000 Drupal sites that Drupal.org reports, 6,400 of them uh, are Commerce Kickstarter sites. That's the most popular distribution. And the next 10 distros combined only account for 4,000 results altogether. So that's not very many. That's total of the 11 most popular Drupal distributions reported to Drupal.org accounts for only 1.2% of the Drupal install base. It's a lot of money to invest for such a very small install base. So another, another really important aspect of distribution I started telling you a bit about how you make them, you get that list, that make file, and you put it on Drupal at work, and it uses apps around the internet, grabbing things, and it smushes them together. This is another interesting concept. Who, who here uses the feature module and the features way of developing in your workflow? All right, now we're on home turf. Great. A lot of you know about features. What is the feature module? So if you look at the pages on Google.org for uh, a lot of those distributions that I just went through, for example, um, this is for Drupal Commons. They included in Comments. So look at, look at the names here. Comments events, comments notices, comments radioactivity. Who uses the radioactivity module? It's awesome. It's really good. Um, what that is, the comments radioactivity is actually a feature module that they've exported from all of the configuration of the dependencies that comments uh, needs in order to use this other module called the radioactivity module, which is just this. A uh, really cool tool for measuring the current popularity of content on your site. So it's in a position to show you which posts people are looking at the most right now on your website. Very good. To check it out. It's very good. And the pattern that I'm showing you here, and if I show you another one here, is um, one called uh, from a distribution called Open Outreach, which is very good. Um, and all of their uh, feature Modules are called debut, something so debut article, debut bio, debut blog, etc. All of these are glue modules between the distribution and some other modules that they want to use in the distribution. And the glue modules are very important. So here's a, another list from Open Enterprise. So blog, links, forum, images, really basic stuff in a lot of cases stuff that we take for granted on most of the websites that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. They have these connectors that are feature exports, and the way it works is the developer will build the site, will build the distribution, configure it, and code it the way they want to, and they'll use the features module, this is the interface to the features module, to check all of the uh, bits and pieces of the work that they've done that they can then export into one of these connector modules. So then it, it grabs all of the context dependencies, fields, image styles, languages, menu links, roles, taxonomy, et cetera, and exports those into a, yet another module. And that module it has its sole purpose in maintaining the state of configuration of dependencies and bringing when you install that module, it will bring yourself back into the state that the developer will put it into. So it's like, if you set the site title to be Rob's awesome website and then export a feature, anybody who installs that feature, if they install that feature, their site will be called Rob's awesome website. Basically, it's a way to transport configuration from one website to another. And it's a very good pattern inside of a lot of these distributions actually fundamentally essential to building distributions. So you export and import these things that Drupal does into a Drupal module, and it's a good pattern, and then you can put that module into your distribution. So that brush make file that I talked about at the beginning, the list of all the things, the pieces of software that you need to get from the internet to build a distribution, a lot of those things are these feature modules that you've 
and support it that have the configuration to recreate a part of your website. But you can tell from the from the um, the title, the name of it, features, that the people who created it had uh, maybe a larger purpose for it. They actually thought that they would be able to build a repository of not configuration, but features, like an image gallery that works, or a forum that rocks, or a blog that has a good user interface. Things, trivial things, unimportant things like that, that actually craft a decent web experience. And um, it hasn't actually risen to that. It hasn't uh, risen to provide the apps concept where you download and install an app wherever you got it from, and it provides you an out-of-the-box experience that is exciting and full-fledged. Like it, it never has you reached the end user of Drupal, these features. Features are almost exclusively used for configuration management. It's a good thing we're putting that into play. The uh, configuration management. And the distributions, these features, they're used almost exclusively for organizing the building process of a distribution. I can't think of any example off the top of my head where somebody's built an image gallery feature and they distribute the feature. You can use that image gallery feature on anybody's website. You grab it, you get the dependencies, you install it, and boom, you've got the perfect image gallery on it. Does anybody know any features like that that actually get used like that? No. Features has a few limitations as a mechanism, and maybe that's part of why it hasn't lived up to the promise that it originally had, although it's a very useful thing. You know, half of the room raises their hands, and the other half are probably themers, so you don't use it anyway. Um, for example, you can't make the dependency chain features. You can't say, this feature actually depends on another feature, and have that work in an organized way, uh, with, you know, especially with the life cycle of the feature where you might have to update it and import it, change it, re-export it, maintain all those dependencies. As far as I know, you can't do several feature sets. That's a blank slide that represents a lost thought. <laughs> it was late. So when I was preparing this, I asked myself another interesting rhetorical question. I, I stumbled across a lonely, forlorn website that was actually mine. It was my group blog. And, and, and I, I was a little taken back, and I thought, how did it happen that a Drupal developer such as myself, somebody you know, neck deep in Drupal day in, day out, has stopped using his own website to communicate with the rest of the world? When did we stop writing our blogs on Drupal? How many of you have maintained a Drupal blog now? Well, good on you, good on you. Why aren't the rest of us doing it, though? What do you use, Facebook, Tumblr, Google Plus? You're hard to not communicate with the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought about my own usage patterns over the years. And I thought, what's really important to me when I go to the internet? What drives the internet? Don't answer that question out loud. <laughs> what do people do on the internet when they go to a site like Reddit or Facebook or Google Plus? What makes those sites see? Images. Videos, media, sharing rich communications, authoring things, quickly, fast, and easily sharing them with the widest audience. We used to call ourselves Drupal Community Plumbing, which has a strong implication that we facilitate communication and sharing and all of that. We moved a little bit away from that tagline, but I think that's still really close to our roots and where we want to be. So, I devised a little test. Compare in the next series of very short videos, the image sharing experience between a few popular websites and a couple of Drupal websites. So we'll start with Google Plus. So yeah, grab some images, you can handle a lot all at once. Give it some title, you know. While you're doing that, the upload starts. 
got these nice little animated graphics, some of the things to pop in. And I don't even edit a photo while the others are still uploading. Okay? Because, like, really? Snarky little comments that I love to make, so they're funny. And then you can really edit the crap out of these photos. You can do so many things right there in the browser. It's very nice. So I'll put a, a title. And I'll change the color as if you can see. <laughs> And there it is. And um, there's the image gallery again. It does facial, facial recognition, and <laughs> I think mean, it's fairly scary. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Google is um, analyzing every word that they say right now. I think this computer over here is screaming out to the internet, in fact. <laughs> and then you share it to like everybody on the internet. And all of a sudden, you know, 30, 50 people just got a, a notification that they're doing these pictures, and it's like great little animation. So, it's fun. No, I like doing it. The internet can actually slower. I set it up with video edit. <laughs> so, next one. It's Google, but also really important, the concept of a stream and how people interact with like, uh, the idea of content going through time and how Facebook pioneered that. And it's so easy to upload an image onto a stream and just have it go out and and, and be there and share it. It's brilliant. This is a lot of money. Google is Google. You can say anything you want, but guess what? These sites, Google didn't, Google didn't really even exist for our practical purposes when Google was created. We've got a head start like you'd never believe. We've got 800,000 people worldwide working on this project. There aren't really a lot of excuses for why we can't build something like that. We can. We've got all the technology in the world to do it. They don't have a monopoly on any of that stuff. So here's Facebook, I'm going to send one story, right? I'm just going to take 45 seconds. We grab all your photos, you drag and drop them over. Uh, it starts all the processing in parallel. Uh, you can put all the metadata in while you're doing it. It looks up the people. Every field is in place editing, what the fields are exactly on the website where you're going to see them later, right? So you have a very one to one relationship with all what you're doing and what the effect is going to be. You don't have to guess if they do this, it's going to you know, if this butterfly flaps its wings in Madagascar, there's going to be a hurricane in California. It's not like that. It's like, oh, I'm editing the title. It's right there. And, you know, you've got your image gallery. Share it out to a lot of people. Very nice. Compare that to uh, the second most popular, second or third most popular group distribution out there. Okay, so already I have to enter an author, so I'm in a situation where I've got mobile and mobile. <laughs> so it's time we do the Parallel image upload is good, good for us. Um, this doesn't look quite as nice, but you know, maybe a little bit of theming would help. It's not exactly what you see, what you get editing, it's not like in place editing. And in this case, there's a weird fact that there are about 30 extra fields, but I think that's just a bug. And you know, the, what you see is what you get editor is very nice. This is, okay, it's, it's okay, right? I'm not here to say that. We're hopelessly bad. But that's not Google's experience, that's Open Publish's experience. How many of you run your websites on Open Publish? Okay. How many of you have image gallery feature on your website that nice? As Open Publish? Nicer? Anybody? Yeah. This is a very smart guy over here. He's scary. It's no surprise he's got a nice image gallery. We can't all have much other status. Not unless we collaborate, at least. So, there was that. Oh, there's actually even a distribution called OpenFolio, a Drupal distribution for creating image galleries. And I tested that too. So, here's the experience that you grab one photo, upload it in a very standard, ugly Drupal form, and save, and there's another photo. And the extent of the image gallery is that you can upload one photo at a time and they're in categories and they're in lists like this. With the nice, you know, the, the title of the photo in the in the bar across, you know, over like that's the extent of the functionality of the distribution that's supposed to do photo galleries. And I'm not trying to criticize that person's work because I can tell you that took a whole lot of effort. It was not trivial. You know, that, was, that was somebody spending a lot of time uh, doing that. 
fact, how much time would you spend making photo gallery in Drupal if you had to start now? Uh, Alex, how much time was your nice photo gallery? Couple uh, years. <laughs> so multiply that by two weeks. Like I said, he's a real smart guy. And that's how long it would take me. So in four years, I can have a nice Drupal image gallery. So this is how long. Step one. Step two. This is one of the many, many, many tutorials for doing this. This it was actually a session proposed for this Drupal camp on creating an image gallery. And I don't think it got accepted. Five, create the view, because after all, there are like loads of video or tutorials on how to do it in Drupal, so obviously anybody could do it. It's trivial, really. I mean, it's, it's really not something you need to talk about at the camp anymore. There you go. Voila. It's easy. That's just one of seven or eight approaches. You have your choice. Follow the Vada. You can do it any way that you want in Drupal. There are probably a thousand ways to build an image gallery in Drupal. I'm not sure if any of the other ones can be done in less than nine steps, but maybe they can. So the concept, the theory, the hope, when people came up with the uh, concept of the feature server, was that you have Drupal 7 core, on top of that you build a distribution, and then you have this um, common enabling platform of features and C tools, a lot of which is actually going into Drupal 8, which is really good. And then you have an apps console. Okay? You'd be able to browse, see if you can visualize this type of experience, see if, I mean, this is a stretch. I know that for a lot of you, you're going to have to really go into the depths of your minds and stretch to see what I'm talking about. But imagine going to a place where you can see all of the available apps and you just choose them. And you click it. And all of a sudden, it's there. It would be magic, right? It would be incredible. And that was actually the, the vision behind the features uh, module. Because there's a corollary module to that called the features server where people were supposed to build a repository of full-fledged end-user facing features that did specific common tasks that may or may not be important, like image galleries, blogs, forums, the rock, etc. There aren't any of these feature servers on the wild that you can use, really. There are a couple companies like um, um, people who do open enterprise, and phase two, they both run. And they have some total of five or six features, which are actually distributed with their distributions to begin with anyway, in those, and there's really not much of a point. Uh, there's no public way to put your feature on them, so they're not growing these repositories, and there's no commercial model behind them. However, there's, there's a, bit of a, a bit of traction. It's not lost, it's not hopeless. There are some distributions that are using this apps features concept, and you can hook them up and, and, and actually download some code and do it. I mean, I did that last night. So I spun this site up. This is an open public site. I was using Pantheon because it's got one click install. It's really nice. This was actually fundamental to the creation of the company. This idea that you could just do one click install a Drupal distribution and then put apps and bring them in like that. They really believe in stuff. So I got the ideation, and you saw it. I downloaded it from a, a, a server, and there it is. Now I can submit an idea, and the feature kind of sucks, but I still got a feature. It was really great, okay? You know, I got code from some server, it installed it into my Drupal, and I was able to just use it just like that. So the problem is that there, there aren't many. There are like five features in that feature server. And there's no way that Christoph, who loves to build your features, could put one of his there. And there's no way that you, when you install your vanilla Drupal, you can hook up your Drupal easily to query that feature server. And imagine the difference if there were 100 features or 1,000 features in there, and when you installed Drupal, it immediately went shopping. You know, I said, hey, congratulations, welcome to Drupal. Welcome to the Drupal sphere. What would you like to install now? There's this ideation feature. Rob says it sucks, but maybe you like it. There's an image gallery, etc., 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 etc. Sorry, Jeff, sorry, Karen, those girls suck. <laughs> so, what's good about the app server? They're full of functioning features. Full, by full, I mean there are five or six. Uh, you can download code from a center repository, and it's really a site, a point and click site building 
experience. If you could extend that to themes, then you'd really be enabling people to put together a, um, a Drupal behavior and a Drupal visual concept uh, without any programming experience whatsoever. And you wouldn't be sending them to do 10 step image gallery tutorials, uh, which is going to confuse most people. You know, when, when my goal is to have a grid of my images from my vacation, and I'm having to do news arguments and contexts and panels, that's really for a specialist type of person. Okay, that's, that's not for the average Joe. What's bad about the app server? There's no public app server where people can put their apps. There's no commercial model behind it. There's nothing that you can buy there. There's no possible way that you can share any value back with the creator of those features. So, you know, free market, economics, who had it, eco one on eco one on one. It's like there's no incentive. Then people aren't going to do stuff for free for you in a lot of cases. So there's an interesting difference. We're really good at, at as a free open source community at building toolkits, entity API, search API, rules, views, C tools. These are toolkits. Why? Because we're building sites with a larger vision, a more important thing, a purpose, a, a use case for ourselves. And along the way, we need repeatable tool sets. So we share our tool sets, but we don't share the end results. Okay. Um, we, we create these sites that probably have great image galleries in some cases, but we stop short of actually sharing the image gallery. We only invest in the toolkit. So an app store or a feature server or whatever you want to call it would actually have a commercial model behind it to incentivize people to do that. Um, because the current incentive model stops one step short of having people share their end product with you or building their end product in a way that's actually suitable for you because it takes a lot of it takes a lot of hard work and really careful consideration to build a product that is generally useful, flexible enough for people's use cases, but yet specific enough to be useful right away. That's hard stuff. What's that? At least a couple people in the community who are doing really hard thought about how to make this better. And one of them is Nedro Rogers. Nedro, glad you joined us out there in the east west coast of the USA. I hope you're online watching. If not, this rocks. He's been working on the concept of apps compatible, the set of guidelines and technical considerations that a distribution builder or a feature builder would want to follow if they want their app to be generally installable and maintainable across a lot of distributions. So this is where you break out of the entire website distribution model and you say, oh, my image gallery would work on open public, open published, open atrium, Commerce Kickstarter, and OpenFolio, or whatever. Okay, we're not there yet, but Nejo is thinking about that. If you want to see his work, and you want to try the distribution called Open Outreach, and look through the entire suite of debut features that he has. Now, Nejo's not a graphic designer. His font choices and color choices for the distribution are a little unfortunate, but just open up the CSS and change it quickly. And <laughs> Because it's actually a lot more of it than you would notice just by the first install. It's really good work, but it's only a, a two-person team out there. The company seems to chocolate really. And they're doing great stuff, but they're basically alone in this. Like, two lonely salmon swimming up the river against the tide. It's, it's, it's a tragic story. But pay some attention to it and help out, because it's, it's actually a story that can end very well for Drupal. So let me bring this back to what I do on a day to day basis. So, Commerce guys has a concept of our distribution, Commerce Kickstart, and a website that we maintain called Commerce Marketplace. And the interplay between those two places now, because there's a commercial agreement between every one of the um, offers that we have in our marketplace, it's growing somewhat slowly. We only have nine offers there now. Predict by the time we get to Portland, we'll have maybe uh, 15 commercial offers, and we're going to add a bunch of free toolkit modules that are also useful. Um, because what we want to be able to do by the time we get to Portland is show you a Kickstart where you connect Kickstart to the marketplace, the same way that you connect to Facebook or Twitter and let you know Facebook talk to Twitter or um, you know 
this OAuth 2, really an OAuth 2 module that will give the marketplace um, a credential that you can share between Kickstarter and the marketplace. And then you do things. You can um, download modules. Okay, so you can get those 50 commercial modules and the 20 or 30 free toolkit modules that we're going to put up there. And you can also, and this is the point at which it differs from any models that we get, you can enter commercial agreements with the partners that we put up there. And the uh, software will actually take you through that and help you set up your credentials, help you uh, set up an agreement with Giraffe or Yota or a payment gateway to start using their commercial service. Because in the world of e-commerce, you're not going to just make it on free tools ever. So you, you have to work with some commercial provider. You have to work with a payment gateway that's going to skim off your sales. And you're just OK with that, because it's the only way to do business online. So this is not a radical departure from what people do when they do e-commerce sites. We're just enabling it. And we have this concept of this interplay between the website and the central repository of cool things that you need that help you succeed. And we're getting really close to um, having that full story. Like, you should all come to Portland and see it when we launch it in May. Who's going to go? Portland? Good. We'll demonstrate it in Prague as well later in the year. Maybe we'll come back to London. John's going to London. Anyway, I'm really excited about that because it's a Drupal first. There's literally no marketplace that has commercial agreements for all of the things on there that anybody can get onto. If they're commerce relevant, and you can get the software into somebody's website with the configuration, with the agreement to be in a commercial agreement, which means that we have an incentive to keep making it better and better and better. Very excited about that. So, what are the good examples? Distributions. I mentioned open outreach. This is amazing. Those colors look exactly the same on that screen as they do mine. Those are the only, only colors you can make the presentation. Those are the real colors. <laughs> so, as I said, there's a list of available debut features that come with Open Outreach. Very, very, very solid basis to start with. Uh, for any site builder, this is a great starting point. This will accelerate your uh, customer site builds by a lot. I'm, I'm certain of it. Another interesting one, Red Hand CRM. I mentioned it before by a company called ThinkShop. And here we see an interesting pattern that I just want to point out. Red Hand is not in itself a distribution, it's a module. But they also build a distribution around that module that configures it and really gets it to the point where you're ready to use it. And it's a little similar in a way to what we've done with commerce and commerce Kickstarter. So the commerce platform and all of the surrounding modules that you need to make it work are their own thing. And then we've got the distribution that puts it all together. So this is uh, an interesting pattern. Uh, Rogues, smile here, it's funny. Oh, there you are. So you can talk to uh, Rumble about this, but um, it's a hotel booking service. And it's uh, being done by the company Blue Spark. And it's really fascinating stuff. It's not everybody's use case if you want to do a hotel booking website, but if it is your use case, it's amazing. And again, it's uh, a module, but there's a concept of a distribution that goes around it. Here's a good one, okay? This is not a distribution, this is a module, Simple News. I looked at the list of the most installed Drupal modules, and scroll down and 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 down until I came to the first good module that wasn't a toolkit. That it was actually a feature. Not in the Drupal features model sense, but it gave me functionality out of the box to solve one use case, one business problem. It wasn't used, it wasn't an exportable this, it wasn't an API that, it was a newsletter. Okay? This is the first one that I found that really cried out to me. This is a Drupal native end user feature that does what it says. Now, in the day when we had Drupal Camp, Antwerp, and Amsterdam, the, the cool thing back then was the image module. Guess what the image module did? It let you upload a whole bunch of images and have an image gallery and organize that image gallery. One module. You installed the module, and you had your image upload and your image gallery all in one thing. Why did we move away from that? 
well, because it didn't really interact with the rest of the system the way you wanted it to. Okay, well, an image should really be a field. You should be able to put a field on any content type. And then you should be able to make listings of those images, like everything that the module did already, right? You should be able to do that in a more abstract way. So we broke the thing down into its component bits. Same with the audio module. There was an audio module that would let you get, upload a whole bunch of MP3 files and have a player. That was back in 2005. Okay? Finding a module that makes it really easy to upload a whole bunch of MP3 files and have a player in Drupal. No, you're going to get sent off to a tutorial with nine steps that has views and C tools and contacts and whatever, which is fine. It's not a regression, but we have to bring it back home. We have to have that audio module that an end user could just install and have a playlist. We had it in 2005. We went away for, with a deep purpose in mind, but we need to bring it back home. And we need an incentive to do that. Simple News was the first one that I found that did that. And it's very successful. It's got 56,000 uh, installs, which is quite a few. And it's got a whole world of modules around it, this list of related modules that enhance it in a specific way. It's a great example. It called the dead several times. Every group operated. I know we want to do this. It's old stuff. But it satisfies one use case and it does it well enough for 56,000 websites. So, why else does the feature thing well, in my opinion? Well, I have to admit I'm a little scared of this type of stuff for the future of Drupal. And I have to admit that I think this is part of why WordPress has 17% of the internet and we only have two. It's because they have a very, very large commercial ecosystem about end user features that do things exactly what I'm talking about. They give you a image gallery or a slider or SEO or whatever. How many of you have ever paid money for a WordPress plugin? Go try it, it's fun, really. Try it, just buy one. <laughs> Go out and buy some, $20. Get the taste of what that would be like. In, in, in your mouth, you know, <laughs> or over your fingers, or in your eyes, however you experience, however you personally internalize the experience, the behind it will offer you support if you have a problem, they'll fix a bug if you find it, and they'll give you an upgrade when they make one, and they have an incentive to make one, because guess what, from that slider, which is nothing more than a well-themed view of images, They've made $160,000. This is one of 100 competing products. There's a real market for this. That's money left on the table. I mean, let's not pretend. We're here because we're almost all, in some way, in business with Drupal. Why would we not do a business like that? Is that from WordPress.com? Is that the marketplace? Um, so, no, WordPress.com, I don't think they monetize their marketplace, and that means that there are third-party marketplaces. Um, I can't remember what this one was called. Theme Forest. What is it? Theme Forest. Theme Forest. Yeah. It looked pretty cool. I, 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 I wish that I could have installed some of those things onto Drupal. But a lot of them are just really nicely done things that you can actually do with Drupal fairly well, fairly easily. We're in a way better position to benefit from something like this than WordPress is. But we don't. We just don't. There's some blocking that stops us from ever doing anything like that. So how do we improve Drupal as a product? We've had Drupal distribution since the Drupal 4.6 era, and I first wrote about the potential of Drupal distributions in 2005. Drupal distributions have great potential. Turnkey solutions. Help us compete in new and different markets, something that could help Drupal become a significant player. The number of verticals is nearly unlimited and the opportunities are numerous. Step four, distribution could help if we do them right. Does anybody know where that came from? Anybody look it up? Who remembers the small part of it? So the small core debate came from a post called the Small Core Manifesto. I'm not trying to raise the small core debate again, but I'm really surprised that nobody was heard of it. Where the idea was that Drupal core should be light, minimal, small core. 
and that we should be working on repositories of features and distributions that build the CMS functionality or the CRM functionality or the ERP functionality or the e-commerce functionality. And that any time you install Drupal, it should be able to morph into one of those things or many of those things based on what you decide to install into it. And that we have an operability plan that makes the CRM, the ERP, and the e-commerce be able to work together the way that you would be able to install nearly unlimited software under a Debian installation through apt-get without running into significant con conflicts in the software because they have a very organized way of managing dependencies and upgrades, etc. And it's very well thought out and well documented and copyable in a lot of ways. <coughs> and in response, Dries wrote, in addition to what I just said, as a community, we have to take responsibility and make sure that distributions collaborate rather than compete. This was uh, 2009. Um, much like the way that we attempt to work together on modules. That starts by centralizing all the code on Drupal or, or by making Drupal core flexible enough, but also by encouraging shared design patterns and user experiences. With distributions, community responsibility and leadership becomes even more important. Building one product is hard, building a set of products in that way is even harder. My point, five years went by or so, between four, four and a half, five years went by, and we were saying exactly the same thing, and nothing changed. Um, that being said, when I realized that, that he even quoted himself when addressing a small core debate about whether or not we should like scale back the CMS features approval and go with a small core or keep building them up, which is actually the direction we ended up doing. Um, he quoted himself and uh, the distributions that are just not making it. one percent of all the installs of Drupal and uh, I mean if you go and install a lot of them, I'm sorry they're not up to par. They give you crappy install experiences. It's hard to make a distribution of people. If you take the top five distributions after Commerce Start, four of them are two or three versions of Drupal Core behind, including a major security update. You can't use that. So I don't think we're seeing in that respect with Dries' vision, with my vision, uh, with the, uh, the app-server vision of what it would be like to point and click the site together to have these common useful features that just work out of the box. Um, you know, there was a, who, re, who remembers the App Store debate from, yeah, like a lot of people got really upset when we started talking about that. And most everybody agreed that it was far too scary to do anything about. It's an opportunity to miss people. I really feel that way. I think we still have the opportunity, but we shouldn't leave it laying around anymore. We're going to do it for uh, the e-commerce world. You can watch us and see if it works. I hope it will work. And if it does work, then I hope other people will copy it and start to make their repositories of great things that people have done with Drupal that are going to be reused that go beyond the toolkit that are actually major features that enable people to have these WordPress-like experiences that are just great for the user in the end. So yeah, focus on the best of great stuff. You know, if you want to build something, if you want to make a model, go look at G+, go look at Facebook. They do things really, really well. Make the public apps repository. Let other people put stuff into it. Find a commercial model to put around it so that there is incentive to maintain the code that you're doing and solve common problems for the people who are using Drupal. And, you know, make sure that you've got a uh, click to install and click to update functionality so that the people who are non-technical, who want to build websites, have a way to get the software that works, the software that they need, the software that they want, and reward you for having built it for them. I think there's some good stuff in Drupal 8 that will help this, but honestly, it hasn't focused on this problem a lot. Probably the most useful thing here is that Drupal 8 takes the configuration management task that features the module is supposed to be doing, and it internalizes it. It also makes you know the whole experience is much nicer, and Drupal 8 is going to be great for us, and we've got uh, you know more life in the Drupal project through it, and you know I'm still very optimistic about Drupal, and I still love Drupal. And I can highly recommend this to come out and people have done great work. But it doesn't address anything that I talked about. <laughs> Not really. It doesn't, it doesn't really address the wide diversity of possible types of websites that you could point and click to build, that you can get from places <coughs> like WordPress that are available to Google. So that's my message. It's full of joy for 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> Hopefully I did enough song and dance to make it a little bit entertaining. And I, we will get into questions. Thomas,
Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Uh,